that the weather outside is quite sunny and do you know that the climate of Mosindram is really wet. Hey, uh, why did you use two different words, weather and climate? What is the difference between them and what do they even mean? Okay, let me explain it to you. Have you seen the daily weather report that comes on the TV or in the newspaper? It carries the information about the temperature, the rainfall and the humidity level of the particular day and predicts the weather. And what is humidity? Humidity means the level of moisture in the air. The weather reports are prepared by the meteorological department of the government. What they do is, the meteorologist study the data of the temperature, wind speed, etc. and make predictions of the weather in the following day. Now, let me tell you a fun fact that do you know how the rainwater is measured? The rainwater is measured by an instrument known as the rain gauge. It has, it is, a, it is a big cylinder with a funnel on the top that is used to store the rainwater and then it measures the rainwater. Temperature, humidity, wind speed, rainfall etc. are the elements of weather. In the weather reports, you must have seen that, that the reporters tell you that the minimum temperature of the day will be 25 degrees Celsius and the highest and the maximum temperature of the day will be 30 degrees Celsius for example. But how do they measure these minimum and maximum temperatures? This, this can be done by special thermometers known as the minimum and maximum thermometers. Meteorologists have preserved the records that they have predicted and they have kept it from the past several decades. This helps us to identify the weather pattern of that place. For example, the climate of Kerala is hot and humid and the climate of Antarctica is cold. Now, let's talk about climate. Climate is just long time pattern of weather. Basically, it can also be said as a weather that remains for a long period of time is climate. The earth can be divided into three parts based on their climate. They are known as the climate zones. The first one are the first one are the polar regions. As the name suggests, they lie near the poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. They have a cold uh, climate. Now comes the tropical rainforests. They lie near the equator. Then comes the temperate zones that lies between the that lies between the tropical rainforests and the polar region the temperature in the polar regions can reach up to minus 37 degrees celsius that is really cold the animals that live over there have the animals that live over there have adapted themselves to these uh, severe conditions and what are the animals that live over there they are the polar bears the penguins the seals etc now let us see their adaptation features so that we can understand them better now let us talk about the polar bears the polar bear has white fur that helps it camouflage in the snow that saves it from the predators and helps it to and helps it to uh, catch uh, catch on its prey. Now, let us talk about it. The polar bear keeping him itself warm. So, how does it keep it warm? Its fur is really thick, and it has a layer of fat under its body that is known as the blubber. Now, 
the fat it is so well insulated that they need to move to avoid overheating in their body on not so cool days they need to do many physical activities for avoiding the overheating swimming is a good option polar bears are great swimmers they can swim very well because they have big white paws they have large they have thick and big paws which not only helps it to swim but the, which not only helps it to swim but also it uh, because of the big paws it is uh, it is easier for the polar bear to walk on the snow because the snow is quite slippery while swimming the polar bears can close their nostrils so they can uh, stay under the so they can stay under the sea or the ocean or the water body for long duration now let us talk about the penguins the penguins also have a layer of fat and they are white in color to mix in with the white background and they have and they huddle together to keep themselves warm now they have a streamlined they have a streamlined body and they have webbed feet which helps them to swim in water during really cold months the polar bears and several other animals that live in the polar regions they hibernate which is a long sleep in which they get in they get in the caves or they get into they get it in they get into their caves and sleep for a long duration of time the birds living in the polar regions they migrate and what does migration mean what what they basically do is they fly from the polar regions to a dip, to uh, the moderate zones or or to the or to a bit uh, warmer place there are many birds that migrate from the polar regions to india like uh, sultanpur in haryana then now let me tell you there is a bird named the uh, there is a bird named the arctic bird what it does it it goes from the antarctic to the arctic or the arctic to the antarctic because in 6 months the in 6 months the sun rays are coming on the arctic and for the next 6 months the sun rays are coming on the antarctic so this is how it migrates can you imagine the birds flying for such a long distance but do only the birds migrate no butterflies also migrate the monarch butterflies and many other species and many other animals can you imagine they fly for so long distances but yes they do, they do take breaks in between for some rest now let us talk about the tropical rainforest they usually have a hot and humid climate which means that is because it is situated near the equator it has a large variety of animals and plants because a lot of species of animals and plants can survive in can survive in that particular area in that particular climate even in the coldest months the temperature is higher than 15 degrees celsius and in the hottest months the temperatures can cross 40 degrees celsius the nights are almost the same time nights are almost the same time as the day and there is plenty of rainfall in these regions now let us see that where are these tropical rainforests found in india they are found in some of the northeastern states like assam and in the western ghats and the uh, tropical rainforests are also found in southeast asia central america and central africa uh, as i have told you that uh, the tropical rainforest climate supports many species right so now let us see uh, the adaptations of these animals that uh, help them 
uh, that help them to live in these in the really in these really hot climatic conditions the first animal that i will talk about is the red eyed frog the red eyed frog as the name suggests it has red eyes and the most special thing about this is its legs it has developed sticky pads on its legs which which helps it to climb the trees now let us talk about the monkeys have you seen a monkey it has a really 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 long tail and have you seen its hands it its hands and its legs have a really amazing grip which helps it to clinch and climb up the trees and what is the need for that really long tail that it has it first of all it helps them to clinch and swing on the branches of the trees and it helps them to balance now let us talk about the, the tailed macaque also known as the beard ape what is so special about this uh, special kind of ape the first of all thing is that it usually it, it usually uh, climb it usually stays on the tree it rarely comes down to the ground because it finds sufficient food on the ground uh, it finds sufficient food on the trees and one most special thing about this about it is that it has a silver white mane yes as you can see in this picture it has a silver white mane as you can see and it usually feeds on fruits seeds insects that it finds on the trees so it rarely comes down to the ground it is usually found in the western ghats now let us talk about a uh, one one animal that is well known in india the elephant has big tusks that uh, that helps it to scrape off the bark of the trees which it loves to eat now talking about the huge trunk that it has uh, it works as its hand it helps us to pick up the food and it works as a nose for him that uh, so and he has a great sense of smell and the elephant has big ears big and sensitive ears he can uh, he can move its ears and he can he and he can hear very sensitive voice voices so thank you for watching my video i hope you understood everything if you have any doubts then please do let me know in the comment section below and make sure to subscribe my channel so that you uh, so that you get notified for the upcoming cool science videos